Well, hello, my friend. Welcome back to another episode. Today, we're going to talk about best social media strategies for emerging artists. So if you are an emerging artist, you want to get better in all things social media, you are in the right place because my good friend, Marin Corsell and I, we're going to give you the best of the best in 2023. My name is Sergio Gomez. I'm an artist, curator, gallery owner, author, art business coach. And the goal of this channel is to simplify marketing and art business so that you can spend more time creating and doing what you love in the studio. So if you like that, my friend, make sure you click on the subscribe button and also on the little bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming episodes. Hi everyone, I'm Maureen. I am a marketing expert in the art world and an artist mentor. I'm the head of communications at Parker Harris based in the UK. And yeah, we help artists with all things strategy and marketing through our various programs. Awesome, amazing. And today, my friend, you are in here for a tip because we have compiled both of us, kind of like the best of the best top strategies that in 2023 will help you move the needle in your social media. You know, I think you are, uh, you know, a witness of this, uh, Marine, how every social media continues to grow, continues to add new features, more of this, more of that. Feels like marketing for artists becomes a heavier and heavier weight that we need to carry, right? So our goal today, my friend, is to help you out, give you some strategies that are tested to work based on both of our experiences, working with so many artists from around the world. You know, uh, we have pulled out really, really good tips that can help you out. And Marine, it's always fun to see, to see you and to chat with you. Happy New Year. And uh, why don't you start with the very first, what is one of the first tips that you would want to give to an emerging artist, you know, to start in 2023? Well, thanks again for having me. And it's, as you said, it's always great to be here and to be with your folks. Um, so the first tip I would give to people is be consistent on whatever level you are. Um, it isn't easy to get started as an artist. It isn't easy to wrap your brain around all the different social media platforms that are out there. So, you know, take a deep breath. It's going to be okay. Um, it's about finding a rhythm that's consistent for you. So a lot of artists come to me and say, how many times should I post? Should I post once a week? You know, find, find a rhythm that works for you and that's sustainable for you. And you can batch content as well. So what I mean by this is if you're in the studio and suddenly you're feeling like, okay, you've got the bandwidth, you know, you've got the mental capacity to do Instagram posts. You can write out several, save them to your drafts and then post them later. Um, for me, on a baseline, once a week is a good basic. If you can do more than that, then great. Increase it to two, three times a week and you're going to see that the results are going to come through consistent posting. What do you think, Safia? I love that one, Marine, because I see a lot of artists who sometimes like they show up and in one week they put like a lot of effort on being on social and then they disappear for like three weeks. Right. So there's no rhyme or reason. Right. I love that because uh, I think it's so important. And I think the algorithms recognize our patterns and the consistency is super important and more or than anything our audience, you know, gets to see us. Right. Well, let's go to another one. So here's another strategy that in 2023 is going to help you if you're an emerging artist looking to get better in your social media, you got to become a master storyteller. You know, and that's something that doesn't matter how old you are. When I talk about emerging, doesn't mean that you have to be young. You could be at any age, but just kind of like coming back to your art career or starting your art career. And at any point in your life, you can become better at storytelling. I believe that artists who do that have a better chance to making a better impression, better connection with the audience, introducing your audience to your art, and uh, there's just something beautiful about stories. I think this is one of the things that everybody loves a good story. That's why Netflix, you know, is a multi-billion dollar company. That's why Disney exists. That's what all these uh, companies who uh, depend on storytelling, you know, do it really well because they never get old, right? Stories never get old. And a lot of times we think like, oh, you know, who cares about my story? My story is not interesting. It's not important. We feel like that because we are living it. But for our audience, people who do not know us, they want to know how our art is made, you know, where the inspiration comes from, uh, you know, what are our ideas about the work that we are doing. It's not that you have to explain your art, 
but you can tell some stories that just kind of become a little invitation, invitation for people to take the next step and get a little closer. And I find that even for me, you know, I love uh, every year just trying to get a little bit better at storytelling because storytelling is not natural to me. You know, I had to learn to do it and had to learn to, to figure out how to best speak about that. And plus, you know, English is my second language, so I had to even invest more time on that. But if you can, you know, invest time on becoming a better storyteller, I think you will do really, really well in your social media, on your emails, and anything else that has to do with marketing your art. I think what you do is magical. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes you can lose sight of that when you're in the studio and creating the work. So we as an audience, we want to know what inspired you, how it was made, what you were feeling. And you don't have to say all those things at once, but just thinking, you know, when you're about to make this post on social media, um, a little something that you can share and how it fits in into the wider story, as Sergio was saying, um, you know, take the other person's point of view, try and forget for one second what you know, because you know how you made it and you know what it was inspired by, but the people at home, they don't and they want to know, so tell them. Marine, give us another one, another great tip for social media. Okay. Another tip that you can use on social media is remember, it's called social media for a reason. You want to be social. So what I mean by that is oftentimes, and don't worry if you do this, I see a lot of artists do it at home, is you, know, you post a photo of your finished work and a caption that says title, medium, size, couple hashtags, you're done. I get you. You know, you became an artist because you wanted to tell stories visually and not in words. However, for the people at home, it's a bit of a missed opportunity, right? So when we look at your post and we see a beautiful painting, we want to know a bit more. We want to engage with you. We want to be social. So try and think about what the person at home is seeing on the other side of the screen and talk to them. Say hi, you know, say I made this painting in the studio. I've just finished it and framed it and signed it. What do you think? Ask them a question, invite the comments to come in. I know it sounds scary, but <laughs> if, you, if you share a bit, then you're going to be inviting this connection with your audience. And this is so important because people buy art, especially online from artists that they admire. So that's great. You've ticked that, you've posted beautiful work from artists that they trust. So post regularly, show them on the website how they can buy the work, maybe show them you know, other collectors who are okay with sharing the beautiful work in their home and artists that they love. This is so important when you're buying a piece of art. So whenever you're using social media, remember to be social, create a conversation, invite those comments, reply in the comments, reply in the DMs, and you'll go such a long way. That is really good one. And I can give you an example of how I used that one yesterday on a post. Hey. <laughs> so I made a reel and I didn't have a whole lot of time that day to you know write a whole story. So I like, how can I engage people? So I, I posted an actual painting that is old. It's about maybe 10 years old, uh, which by the way, is another good point. You don't have to always post whatever is new. You know, what is old to you might be totally new to somebody who has never seen it before. So I picked a painting that was, old, but it was beautifully uh, vertical size, so like perfect for an Instagram reel. And then on the caption, all I did is, how would you title this painting? Even though it already has a title. So, or even to this morning, there's a lot of people who are giving me ideas for a title, <laughs> right? And because people love to be engaged, to be asked, you know, to be, you know, especially when it's a quick answer. All right, my friends, let me give you another social media strategy for emerging artists who want to get more reach, particularly if you have, you know, just a, a few hundred maybe followers, you're looking, how can I make it better in 23? How can I get more followers, get bigger audience that, you know, can connect with? Well, another one that I think is just a great, perfect follow up for what Marin just said is to focus on making connections, but like meaning like one-to-one -one connections. I said, how do I do that in social media where everything just post and leave it, right? Well, it's with, 
using the direct messages. You know, most of the social media platforms have a direct messaging system where you can interact in conversations with other people. You may think that that doesn't matter, but the algorithm, the, the, the social media knows who you're talking to. And I found in my experience that when I'm talking to Marine, for example, on social media, like, hey, you know, let's connect for this or that, I will most likely see her post more often and I will see her showing up on my feed because well, Instagram and some of the other platforms we are using, they know that I'm talking with Marine. So uh, it it assumes that we have a, a connection. And actually, you know, if you're looking at the trends for 2023, uh, Instagram has said that specifically and openly that they want people to have meaningful collections on, uh, connections on Instagram. So if we know that like, oh, okay, Instagram is looking for people to have meaningful connections. If I jump into that wagon, most likely I will do better too in my reach in social media. So the way you do it is, you know, people who comment on your post, you know, go back and comment in some other post. Um, for everyone who wants to connect with me, I tell them, message me on Instagram. I don't tell them, send me an email, send them, message me on Instagram, because I know that helps also, you know, the engagement level on my Instagram page. So that's why when you message me on Instagram, it take me three days to answer, because I send everybody there. But that is, you know, strategically, a way for me to create meaningful connections uh, with people. So, you know, if you start doing the same, you know, you have a collector who buys your art, hey, you know, send them a thank you through Instagram as well. You know, if you have their messaging through Instagram and now, now what's gonna happen is that collector, because it's connected with you through the messenger, most likely it's gonna be seeing more of your posts in the future. So be strategic with your connections, connect with people in a, in a real way, you know, real conversations, uh, and uh, you will find a benefit, you know, from that as well as you look at improving your uh, strategies for social media as an emerging artist. Another tip, if you're wanting to grow your presence on Instagram, and especially if you are wanting to make sales of artwork through Instagram, is make it easy for people to buy. So this means, first of all, being very clear on your goals and your process. So do you want people to be able to buy work from you? Do they buy via the Instagram? Do they buy via the Instagram shop, via DM? Should they inquire via the website? Can they buy direct for the website? Can they do all of these? It's just about you being really clear about what the process is for people to buy and then telling them how to buy. So picture this. I've had so many friends, whether they're consider themselves as art collectors, or they're just people to happen to want art, right? Who have messaged me and gone, do you have any idea what's the price of this work? Because they know I work in art, right? Um, do you have any idea? I don't know how much it costs. I'm, a, I'm, I'm afraid to ask the artist. So put yourself in your buyer's shoes. It can be really intimidating. And it's happened to me to have to reach out to an artist and go, hey, is it for sale? How much is it? Because then you're at the risk of the artist going, oh, it's, you know, it's somewhere wildly beyond your price point. And then it breaks your heart and you have to say, oh, I'm so sorry. I really like it, but I can't afford 25,000 pounds right now or $25,000. So please do yourself a favor and do art lovers and collectors a favor. Tell them the price and tell them how to buy it. You don't need to do this in every post, but just make sure that that's clear, whether it's sending them to the website or inquiries via DM. Writing in your Instagram bio, DM for commissions is not enough, okay? I see you, I know you guys are doing it, don't do that. Make the process really simple and that will help. So. Just one last thought. A lot of artists ask me, should I put the price on my website? Should the price, should I put the price for work on Instagram? And I know it's scary, but why wouldn't you do it? If you want to sell something, then not saying the price is putting barriers in your way. Research has shown that your work is 10 times more likely to sell if you put the price on it. So do yourself a favor and do the people who love your work a favor, make it easy to buy from. 
Absolutely. That is a very good one. And even like from the point of the gallery, which I'm a gallery owner, we have seen in the last couple of years, an increment in sales directly from online sales that people just click and buy, and they don't ask a question many times. They don't even want to be bothered. You just want the artwork to arrive in their home mm -hmm. and sales online continue to go up, continue to go up for us as a gallery because we have made it easy. We have made it super easy for people to see what they like. If somebody understands painting, somebody understands or has been following the artist for a while, uh, it's so easy for them to just click, make sure that, like you said, they find all the information. Very important to uh, tell the, the person also when you put it out for sale, if it's signed in the front or in the back, that's kind of like the first, well, a lot of the questions that collectors want to know, is it signed? So say that, you know, is it signed in the front or it's signed in the back? I show pictures and different views of the artwork that makes it easy for people to know exactly what they're going to get. Have a look at different website providers that allow you to do e-commerce and have a little think as to how you can make that process super easy and super seamless. Well, my friends, uh, here's a, another one really quickly. Um, if you are an artist who is emerging, who is trying to start your art career, who is looking for help, how to manage your social media, your business, you know, your art practice in a world that continues to change, continues to evolve and seems like it's moving faster than ever before. Well, my friend, you need to ask for help. I think we live in a world now where it is okay to ask for help. When I went to art school, it was not okay to ask for help. You were supposed to figure things out and make your own mistakes. And I, when I think back about it, like how stupid that was, right? Now I think we live in a world where it is okay to ask for help. It is okay to message Marine, to message Sergio and say, hey, you know what, what's out there that I can put my hands on and get better at? You know, every time that I want to get better at something, I go and I look for a course, I look for a book, I look for a, a service that can help me get where I want to go faster. I don't want to make the same mistake that 300 people made, right? If uh, there's somebody who can help me to skip that process and get to better results faster. And that's the whole idea of asking for help. Uh, having said that, my friends, you know, if this is an area in which you need help, well, Marine and I, you know, we both have uh, our programs that we help artists in the case of the Art Next Level Academy. That's where you'll have me and Dr. Ana Gomez, where we help artists, you know, maneuver in the art world through uh, particularly making uh, social media marketing easy for you and making your, you know, your art business easy so that you can, you know, they spend more time in the studio. That's my goal as an artist as well. Walk over there to my studio and make more art, right? So if we can facilitate that, that's always helpful. And you can um, do that. We were going to put the links under the bottom of this video where you can find that next level. And I would like for Marine to also tell us, you know, um, what kind of services and resources can our friends find from you, Marine, and where can they find them? Oh, thanks. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, so if people want to engage further with me and with Parker Harris, um, we do consulting for artists, but also galleries and institutions. We do social media management where we look after social media for you. And most importantly, um, we have a program called the Art Ladder um, because we have realized that, you know, as you said, artists want to spend more time in their studios but also you can feel disconnected from the art world. You might have come out from art school or be at a point of your career where you're thinking, right, I want to reach the next step. So what the program does is it puts in front of you curators, gallerists, collectors, and experts from the art world to explain to you best practices to further your career. So it's called the art ladder. So have a look at that and feel free to follow us at Parker Harris Co on social media for top tips and opportunities. Hope you enjoyed this video, my friend. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to click on the bell so that you can get notifications on my future videos. And don't forget to let me know what you think. Goodbye.